Hello there and a very warm welcome to another edition of Channels Beam. I'm Victor Mathias. Now, recent pronouncements by officials of the federal government over the use of social media in the country has raised red flags among citizens and some civil society organizations. The move to regulate social media has been described in many ways, including a violation of the constitutionally guaranteed freedom and rights of citizens online, as well as a ploy to gag the media, claims the government has denied. Now, this edition of the program will examine regulations, if any, that guides the use of social media in the country and also take a look at countries that have internet and social media freedom or lack of it and how their citizens have fared. But before we do that, let's take a look at the trending topics in the social cyberspace in the past week. Lagos residents watched in disbelief as fire gutted the Balogun market, burning goods worth millions of naira. While Nigerians commiserated with those who were affected, they also spoke about the need to have a functional fire service operation in the country. Microblogging site's Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey was in Nigeria, joining other CEOs of top social media sites who have visited in the past three years. Although he did not speak with reporters, the techpreneur is believed to engage tech startups and discuss future partnerships. Well, there you go. Those were the trends in the past week. But joining us to look at today's topic, we have Martin Obono. Um, thank you for joining us on the program today. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, we also have joining us from our Abuja studio, Olamide Akpejoe. Um, thank you for joining us on the program as well. Thank you for having me, Victor. Uh, we also have Adeboya Adegoke. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, so let me just come to you. I mean, let's let's get this conversation started. Um, so much has been going on since, you know, the whole uh, the Minister of Information actually made mention of the fact that, oh, there might be uh, measures put in place to watch what people do on social media. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about it. But I mean, what was your reaction when you first heard that? First, uh, my reaction was um, that you want to gag and regulate social media because you feel it's causing division in the country. However, when the first time we ever had um, um, a people or a group of people uh, fighting against each other, there was nothing called social media by then. Um, when you had the, the, the coups, the, the, the killings of Tafawa Balewa, then you moved to the Nigerian Civil War, there was nothing like social media. So there was not, not, none of those factors existed for people to say, we, don't, we hate each other or we don't like each other, we don't want to be together. Mm -hmm. So the question is, now, why are you putting it on the table as an excuse to say that? <laughs> Maybe times have changed. <clears throat> times have changed, yes, but 
what is making people not to agree together in terms of nationhood and bound, be bound together is actually not social media. It is the factors that basically uh, surround us. So politicians divide us and rule us, and these are the things that they do to ensure that they keep the people in check. So they divide us both ethnic lines, religious lines, and even uh, in social strata. And so people are beginning to think and classify themselves in various ways, and you're saying in social media, it's just a medium. You know, so someone can automatically come on air and say certain things or can write anything he wants to write without necessarily using the internet to write those things. And those things will still generate some level of um, um, our, um, uh, traction, basically. And so on, on social media, right? No, not on social media, yeah. basically. Okay, just generally. Generally yeah. speaking, you know. But, so, so, but social media now has the, the, the propensity to make that you know, got a, a lot more momentum than it would have on, on an ordinary medium, don't but, you think but, so? But the problem is actually not about the regulation of the social media. There are various laws that already exist, you know. We'll, we'll get to the laws, but um, let me go to um, our Buja studio, um, where we have um, Olamide and um, Adeboe. But um, uh, Olamide, let me just um, ask, um, what is the, um, what, what, what power does social media have? I mean, because one of the key um, reasons that they gave was the fact that, oh, um, national security, uh, the, they won't sit down and watch the country go down in flames. Um, so there's just a couple of um, reasons for this um, now regulation or monitoring of social media use in the country. But how powerful is the medium, you know, to have even brought about these concerns in the first place? Thank you very much. Like he has rightly said, social media is simply the medium. Before the invention of social media, internet in Nigeria, we had prints. And this was back in a time where uh, media houses, print, med print media houses were shut down. So, of course, there's now access to the internet and there's more voice, there's more people speaking. Some people based, based on ignorance, some people because of what they've heard, some people from what they've seen. So, yeah, social media is a, is a bigger voice. It's a bigger amplifier to everything that we hear every day, to the regular, you know, paper, print, you know, medium that we've been used to in the past. So yes, social media does have a strong, and uh, it's a bigger audience. It has a bigger audience. It has, um, we have more listeners. We have more people that, you know, divulge information and, you know, disperse them in, 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 in you know, various ways. So yeah, social media does, is a bigger means. And I see why um, anybody will see it as a threat, even though it really isn't. It's just a medium that has over time become bigger it has grown from what the 2000 when it was you know um, introduced in Nigeria. So again, it's a wider platform, and I see why you know it's easy to spread fake news. It's easy to you know even even like like he rightly said, even the politicians and you know leaders use this as a means to spread fake fake news and push their own agenda, and then they still come back to try to say that it's trying to clamp clamp down um, you know our unity, so to speak, which I think is. It's not true because I mean. I'm sorry, like, allow, me to, allow me to let me come in. This, do you, this, if you can hear me, I mean, do you think that the reasons given by the government to regulate or monitor the medium is justifiable? Oh, it's not justifiable. It's not justifiable. I do, I do not. I mean, so, like I, like I said earlier, before the invention of, of social media, there's been people have been dispersing news through print, through, you know, newspapers and you know other mediums that they were using in the past all right i do not think that just because social media there's, a, there's now an invention of social media or the internet there's there's disunity or because of social media there's disunity social media is not the reason for disunity that we're experiencing at the moment if we're if we're talking about i think what the what the ministry of information should be doing is a national orientation to say you know what what are the things that are really really dividing us and Social media is really, really not on that list of what is dividing us. It's, it's, it's the average, you know, Nigerian who has, you know, his own agenda to say, okay, I'm from this part of Nigeria, I'm from the other part of Nigeria, and I think that I want a division. But social media, yes. And the truth, the truth is that social media has done, in my opinion, more good than harm. In, All right, let me, let, me, let, me hold, let, me, let me hold you. When it comes to... 
Let me let me hold you for a bit. Let me bring in um, um, Adeboye, who is um, just um, right next to you um, in Abuja studio. Um, Adeboye, I think okay. Um, so I mean, you are a digital rights um, activist, um, and there's so much going on in that space. I mean, in terms of regulations. Um, but I mean, is there? Do we have any regulations, so to speak, now? And um, um, is it really in place? And basically, how is that working? Okay, thank you. Uh, so, in terms of regulations, we have a lot of laws, uh, some of them very old as, as, old as uh, uh, the military days, that, uh, that are even already too broad in terms of limiting right to freedom of expression. Uh, you could think of the penal code, for example. Uh, you could think of even the cyber crime act, which is very recent, uh, has over uh, very broad provisions that regulate speech, and which is even being criticised globally as limiting people's right to freedom of expression. So, but it's important if we are talking about regulations of law, we have to. It's important to first debunk a myth, and the myth is that once you create a law to regulate social media, then you are going to stop fake news or hate speech. That's the myth. There is no evidence to back that up. Uh, it's very important to point that out. I, I say categorically here today that there is no need to start a law or to initiate a social media regulation because we want to address the problem of hate speech. And it's always very it's always very important to have this conversation from an intelligent point of view. We should not be having knee-jerk reactions to issue. Yeah, everybody agrees that there is a problem with fake news, there is a problem with hate speech, but what we can also agree, which I think there is a consensus around, is the fact that, and which the other people who have, who have spoken on this issue have mentioned, is the fact that this issue preceded uh, the social media. So you cannot criminalize the social media for a problem that has stayed with us or that has lived with us even years before many of us were born. Now, that if we don't put that out of the way, it's also very important to, to point out that conversation around addressing issue of hate speech, fake news, is not a local conversation, it's a global conversation. There is a lot of conversation happening at different global forums on this issue, and there are opportunities to learn and come up with better solutions than just looking for a way to silence dissents or critical voices. It's very important hey, that the okay. citizens resist any attempt. Let me let me just okay. come in and like now you're saying that this I mean precedes this this era I mean you say it's been I mean that conversation or that um, um, gagging or that monitoring has been as old as maybe as some of us were born um, so which automatically means that conversations have been going on also as far back as as that time and um, what solution has been proffered from all of these conversations um, like you said it's not a local thing it's a global um, problem where you've had conversations in various fora. What solutions have been proffered in all of this? Okay, yeah. So one of the one of the key conversations that is happening globally right now is the conversation around content moderation, and that is in terms of putting a lot of responsibilities on social media, uh, tech, the tech companies, the Google, the Facebook of this world, uh, trying to uh, make them accountable, trying to put a lot of responsibility on them. For example, when Germany enacted a law to fight social uh, fake news and all of that, what it did, it didn't focus on the people. It tried to focus on the platforms by saying that when a news is flagged as fake and all of that, give them responsibility to take it down. It tried as much as possible to avoid criminalizing citizens. That was what Germany did. That itself is even being criticized. Okay, let me, also, let me, France again, did again, something again. similar. But you know again. what is interesting? Even when France came up with a law, the law that France came up with has gone back to hurt the French government because it, it has now affected the French government in ways that even the French government could not post a particular hat, which was supposed to help citizens to come out to vote. Now, so, so, so let me come the in. lesson are, are we you, can learn uh, from these two... Okay. Are, are you saying that, um, like, now you made mention of these um, platforms, are you saying they need to rewrite their algorithms, so to speak, to check... Uh, can you come messages? again? I didn't get that. I said, are you saying that the platforms need to rewrite their algorithms? Uh, well, maybe not rewrite. I think there is even need to be a lot of more human, human factor in the picture. Like what Facebook is doing, for example, Facebook is trying to create a, a board, like a board that would see to content, uh, removal of contents and all of that, and they are trying to make it as broad as possible. There is a lot of uh, human, um, human factor that has to be factored, that has to be uh, okay. factor in this conversation, you cannot depend 100% on algorithm because algorithm may not capture local context and nuances and all of that. I have to say thank you for coming and sharing your thoughts. Adeboye uh, Adegoke, um, you are a digital rights um, activist as well as Olamide um, Akpejoe.
She is a, a public affairs analyst as well as a, a PR um, practitioner. Thanks to both of you for joining us on the program. And, I mean, social media, I mean, we're enjoying it. And of course, we want to keep enjoying it and doing all the innovations and all the good things on that platform, marketing, like you made mention earlier. But um, again, thanks as well for joining us on the program. Okay. Martin Obono, a legal practitioner. Um, thank you. We'll take a quick break and we'll return with another perspective. Please stay with us.